Good morning and welcome everyone, both here and at home. Please do be seated. <clears throat> Sorry. Today's service will be taken by Angie and myself, and today's service is Pentecost, um, which commemorates the descent of the Holy Spirit on the apostles and other disciples following the crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus Christ, and marks the beginning of the Christian Church's mission to the world. But before we start a service, first we have the notices. Um, sadly, this Friday was our last film night, but not forever, because obviously it will be back in the autumn. Um, but it does allow us then to do other summer events. And you'd be pleased to know that £100 was raised for Christian Aid as a result of Film Night on Friday. Thank you also though, to those who attended the prayer supper. And can I say, as usual, aren't the flowers uh, lovely in church? Uh, we do have a talented group of ladies and gentlemen who keep our church looking so lovely, and I do think sometimes we forget to say thank you. Advance warning that we'll be holding a Music Sunday, and that is on Sunday the 9th of June, so do please put that date in your diary. We will be joined by the choir of, church, of um, Cop School, Cop School Choir on the morning service, and in the evening we have a deanery call even song. So, two lovely services on that Sunday. Um, I'm planning to renovate the front of bed by the church signposts. We have been held back by the weather because it was just too wet to do, um, and then it was too dry because the ground has gone rock hard. Um, but this is a job that the children cannot do because it's by the road, so we do need adults to do that one. Um, so if anyone can offer their services, it will be much appreciated. It would be lovely to get that area done um, because the children have sown uh, wildflower seeds, cut flower seeds actually out at the front there, uh, which I've just watered this morning, and the seeds are coming through, so they're going to be very excited on Tuesday when they come to see that their seeds are growing. Um, remember, it was, this week was Christian Aid Week, and it's not too late to um, do those envelopes. And on the leaflet, it does tell you the drop-off points, because they will not be collected. You actually deliver them to the set places. Um, I think that's all the notices, unless anybody's got anything else. No? Lovely. Um, so the services for um, this week, this evening will be Vestry Praise, and the next Sunday morning is Holy Communion. The next Messy Church is on the 11th of June, and the next school worship is on the 20th of June. And as always, everyone is welcome to those. So we'll now open the service with a psalm, which draws on today's scripture. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine on us so that your ways may be, no, may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you rule the peoples with equity and guide the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. The land yields its harvest, God. Our God blesses us. May God bless us still, so that all the ends of the earth will fear him. Amen. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. <clears throat> Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Give us the joy of your saving help and sustain us with your life-giving spirit. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. Jesus says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins, restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song will we praise our God. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. 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 We'll now have... <clears throat> I just realised, I think we've missed out a hymn, haven't we? Sorry about that. Right, we'll actually stand for our first hymn, uh, which is number 50, Be Still for the Presence of the Lord. <laughs> We will now have our first reading, which is Sue. And Helena. I think it's Helena. <laughs> Helena. Oh, she doesn't read. <laughs> <laughs> the first reading is taken from Acts chapter 2, beginning to read at the first verse. <laughs> when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? 
Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now stand for our next hymn, which is number 241, Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Sorry about that, my fault. The readings uh, starting from John chapter 15, and we're starting at verse 26, and this is on page, oh now we've got one, and this is on page 1083 in the Pew Bibles. When the counsellor comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth who goes out from the Father. He will testify about me. And you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. 
I have told you this so that when the time comes, you will remember that I warned you. I did not tell you this at first because I was with you. Now, I am going to him who sent me, yet none of you asks me, where are you going? Because I have said these things, you are filled with grief. But I tell you the truth, it's for your good that I'm going away. Unless I go away, the counsellor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will convict the world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment. In regard to sin, because men do not believe in me. In regard to righteousness, because I'm going to the Father, where you can see me no longer. And in regard, sorry, I didn't read that very well. In regard to righteousness, because I'm going to the Father, where you can see me no longer. And in regard to judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will take from what is mine and make it known to you. This is the word of the Lord. Are you sitting comfortably? Good. Then I shall begin. Bob knew where the local church was. He'd driven past it often enough, dropping the children off at school. He'd been invited there a few times, but he didn't go. Well, it's a bit weird, isn't it? It's not normal, is it? He didn't really think about it much, to be honest. Even though a couple of his friends went, and they seem to like it, and they don't go on about it too much, so he's happy for them if it gets them through. Anyway, one day, one of his friends invites him to a barbecue, and there was going to be some fun things for the children to do, and, and cake. Bob likes cake. So Bob asks Maggie if she fancies coming, and they go, and they have a really nice time. Everyone seems really friendly. His wife bumps into some other mums from school and the Prosecco. Bob's driving then and Bob enjoys a particularly nice lemon drizzle and chatting with his mates. While he's there, Bob picks up a leaflet about a course called Alpha. Maggie tends to do marking on a Tuesday so he could go. And then he starts thinking about whether he could manage a coffee and walnut. But a man comes up and annoyingly interrupts this happy thought. The man says, oh, I've been on that course. It's quite interesting. It tells you the basics about faith and then leaves it up to you to decide whatever you want. My mate John's come into the first one. I'll introduce you. Oh, and the pizza's good too. Bob also likes pizza. Bob goes to the first session with John and the pizza was good. He goes to the second and the third and he carries on going. Anyway, some time later, after some nice hot pot at a quiz night made by some bloke called Paul, Bob gets invited to a kite service with the children. So they go and the kids have a great time running around with the kites and trying to get them to go up and not immediately dive onto the grass. Bob sits on the grass hoping it's dry and wonders a bit if damp grass gives you piles like cold concrete. He listens anyway, and he starts to feel something. He's not sure what it is, because Bob generally doesn't do feelings, but it's good. The Tuesday after Alpha had finished, Bob had had a particularly nice quiche for tea. He'd read another chapter of the Harry Potter book, and Maggie was out with some friends. Bob sits on the edge of his bed looking at the wardrobe. And even though Bob's a clever bloke, he makes decisions all day on, the, on site, 
He's not quite sure where to put his hands, so he grips the duvet cover with them. And he says out loud, right leg bouncing a little bit, Hello, God. If you're there, I might give this faith thing a go. After a while, Bob invites Jesus into his life. Bob goes to family service and he holds Maggie's hand as he walks in. Bob finds something that he's calling meaning. But we're not really known because I think it's the first time Bob's used that word. We might all have very different stories to Bob. We might not all receive the Holy Spirit in the dramatic way that the disciples did. But we accept that we're not perfect and that Jesus died for that not perfectness. And so we can be right with God and live forever in a wonderful, amazing way with God when we invite Jesus into our lives. Let's imagine for a moment when we do that, when we turned to Jesus, invited him into our house, perhaps into a front room. I don't have a front room. Do you have a front room? Anyway, we give him a cup of tea and we sit and we listen to him. And he teaches us something of the Bible, gives us some help on a few things, and we can really talk to him. Jesus really knows how to listen. And then the phone rings and we say, oh, sorry to be a bit rude, can I just get that? And Jesus smiles. When we're back in the room, we're there for a while and then the laptop pings and there's an email, sorry, I'll be back in a jiffy. As time goes on, we spend less and less time in the front room. The family comes round, something on TV and I'm tired and the door to the front room gets pulled too because we don't want Jesus in a draft, do we? Life gets busier and busier and we pop into the front room less and less. And then one day we're in the kitchen having a coffee with a friend and we say, I don't know why, but I just don't seem to hear Jesus' voice anymore. But when we go back in, Jesus is waiting, smiling. Even though we got caught up with busy, busy loudness of life, Jesus is happy to see us. When we receive the Holy Spirit, we actually have God in our bodies and in our minds. Sometimes we can feel him. We, can, we might have visions, dreams, pictures, words given to us, bits of the Bible pop out. Sometimes it can be really quiet. Sometimes we think we haven't heard from him for a while. Sometimes we feel so close to God, the little hairs on your neck stand up. Sometimes we can overpower that voice by letting in so much noise, worry, busyness, but the Holy Spirit is still there. 1 Kings 19 says, Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. And the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord wasn't in the fire. After the fire came a gentle whisper. The Lord whispered gently to Elijah. He didn't roar at him in the wind, the fire, or the earthquake, but in a still, small voice. God doesn't terrify us with earthquakes and fires. He speaks to us all differently according to what we need because he knows us it says in Joel 28 I'll pour my spirit on all people your sons and daughters will prophesy your old men will dream dreams your young men will see visions on my servants men and women I will pour out my spirit the Holy Spirit has the power of God the power of the wind the earthquake the fire and the Holy Spirit speaks with God for us he is not within us to condemn, as Jesus said. He didn't come to condemn, but to save us. And God does all this, even knowing what we think and what we feel. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. We are not slaves, we are free. And if we decide to fill our lives and leave the front room, 
We can. There's a film, I do like a film, as you know. There's a film called The Forbidden Kingdom, and bear with me, it's about a young American boy who finds himself in ancient China, and he has to restore a magical staff to the monkey king so he can defeat the Jade Lord. Anyway, that's beside the point. The young boy has a kung fu master who is going to help him in his journey. And the young boy has watched so many kung fu movies, he's, he's at the, the camp in the woods with his master and he says, oh, you're going to teach me, what are you going to teach me? You're going to teach me Budapong, you're going to teach me Crane, are you going to teach me this technique and this technique, I've seen this film with Jet Li in it, can you teach me that? Aha, and Bruce Lee, could you teach me his kung fu style too? I've seen it all. And the Jackie Chan character is pouring and pouring the tea into the cup and it starts to overflow. And the Jackie Chan character says, how can you learn? Your cup is overflowing. You must empty your cup. And the boy doesn't quite understand. He throws away the tea. He doesn't get it. If we want to learn God's will, the law, anything from the Holy Spirit, we need to listen. We need to come before God with the right attitude, quietly, with gratitude. If it's hard to settle, we can do it with some scripture, with a prayer that's written down, to get us in the right headspace. Very importantly, we should expect answers to our prayers. If we don't expect an answer, we won't be looking for it, we won't realise when it's happened. We could become disheartened. The power of the Holy Spirit is within us. He is awesome, he is mighty, he is, after all, the power of God. But we cannot close the door and then complain we cannot hear him. We cannot learn if our cup is already noisy and busy and full and overflowing with other types of tea. Amen. Thank you, Angie. Very thought-provoking. Um, just before we... Um, <clears throat> stand up for our next hymn. I've just got a note here from Paul. He says, please, can you, um, can you please note there may not be a live stream for the next two weeks. Okay. Um, right, we'll now stand for our next hymn, which is number 613, Spirit of the Living God.
We will now say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We will now have our intercessions. As you know, the needs of each one of us, we ask that you hear our prayers today, and the response today to Lord your Spirit is with us, is hear our prayer. Lord, we look to you and ask that you provide us with the energy and vision of your Spirit. Help those who are tiring from the constant battles and injustice in this world, and for those who are exhausted from hunger due to lack of food or the money to provide it. Lord, your Spirit is with us. Yeah. Hear our prayer. Lord, we ask for peace where there is conflict due to wars around the world. We ask for peace where people are eaten up with guilt and anxiety. We ask for peace within the soul where people are struggling with their faith because life has become so hard and uncaring. Lord, your spirit is with us. Yeah. Hear our prayer. As we start this new year of mission, Lord, we ask you to show us our gifts and talents and the best way to use our time effectively in our daily lives, in our church, in our school, and in our communities. Lord, your spirit is with us. Yeah. Hear our prayer. Lord, lead us with your spirit to help those who are lost and need your comfort and spirit within them. Help us so we can reach out to them with the good news of Christ. Lord, your spirit is with us. Yeah. Hear our prayer. Lord, we ask that you will fill those who are ill and suffering with your spirit and light. Provide them with the in inner energy they need. Provide your loving comfort to those whose souls have been darkened by sorrow or bereavement. And we will now take a few moments to think of those close to our hearts that need our prayers at this time. Lord, your spirit is with us. Yeah. Hear our prayer. The collect for today, Almighty God, your ascended Son has sent us into the world to preach the good news of your kingdom. Inspire us with your spirit and fill our hearts with the fire of your love, that all who hear your word may be drawn to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We now offer up the diocesan vision prayer. Heavenly Father, we embrace your call for us to make disciples, to be witnesses, to grow leaders and inspire children and young people. Give us eyes to see your vision, ears to hear the prompting of your spirit, and courage to follow in the footsteps of your Son, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us now pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Please now stand for our offertory hymn, number 525, O Thou Camest From Above. Thank you, Sharon, for leading us in worship this morning. Thank is you. there tea and coffee after? Oh, yes, there is. Yes, yes super. So please do oh, stay for tea and coffee. And there's a card game. I've got a little uh, box that I got for the children. Okay. But I thought you might like to have a go, because it will make your aunts answer questions. OK. That's something to look forward to. OK. <laughs> Before we go, let's pray. 
spirit of the living God. Molders, breakers, teachers, whatever we need this week as we go from here and, and look at the busyness of our lives. Don't let us stray too far. Keep us close. Keep us yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. Amen.